That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. Uh, my name is Kobe Bryant. Bryant oh! With the bounce pass. Kobe Bryant's Kobe. 17 years old. By 1996, Kobe Bryant was one of the best basketball players in America, and he had one goal in mind, and that was to make it to the NBA. Kobe's father, Joe Jellybean Bryant, had spent eight seasons in the NBA, four with the Philadelphia 76ers, three with the San Diego Clippers, and one with the Houston Rockets. But after his career started to go downhill, he moved the Bryants to Italy, where he played pro basketball, and Kobe lived from when he was six up until he was 13. At 13, the Bryants moved back to Philly and a year later Kobe would begin attending Lower Marion High School. In Lower Marion Kobe took off. He started on the varsity team as a freshman and by his senior year Kobe was one of the most sought after players in America. He was named the Naismith High School Player of the Year, the Gatorade Men's National Player of the Year, a McDonald's All-American. He led the Lower Marion Aces to a state championship and finished his prep career with 2,883 points, breaking the Southern Pennsylvania mark of 2,359 points set by Will Chamberlain. Now, Kobe could have gone anywhere and said that he would have played for Coach K at Duke, but because of Kevin Garnett, who had been drafted fifth overall by the Timberwolves in 1995 and became the first player to be drafted directly out of high school since 1975, Kobe began contemplating going directly to the NBA. But not everybody believed in Kobe. When a camp counselor warned him that only one in a million make it to the NBA, Bryant responded, I'm going to be that one in a million. Kobe ultimately decided to enter the 1996 NBA draft. I, uh, Kobe Bryant, have decided to take my talent to uh, No, I have decided to skip college and take my talent to the NBA where the Charlotte Hornets selected him with the number 13 pick. The Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. So why was Kobe so adamant to forego college to get straight to the NBA? I mean, he was a good student. He scored a 1080 on his SATs. He could have gone anywhere. His dad was a former NBA player, so they weren't hurting for money. Well, his former teammate John Sally said that one of the main reasons why Kobe skipped college was so he could face Michael Jordan before he retired. And on draft night, he told the late, great Craig Sager that he wanted the challenge and he didn't want to have any regrets. You know, if I was 40 years old and I'm sitting back and I'm looking back at my career, if I went to college and played on the NBA, maybe I had a great career, maybe not, and I'm still having that doubt in my mind, could I have answered that challenge? Could I have responded to the challenge of the NBA? And that's something that I didn't want to have on my, on my shoulders, so I just really accepted it. So how did Kobe end up getting traded to his favorite team growing up, the Los Angeles Lakers? Well, you can thank the logo Jerry West for bringing the kid from Philly to L.A. Let's talk about the word we're just hearing that Peter Vesey reporting that the Lakers could possibly be swinging a deal with the Hornets for Kobe Bryant. Kind of goes back to your Jerry West conversation. And speaking with Jerry today, he was just raving about Kobe Bryant. The legendary L.A. Times sports writer Jim Murray once said that Jerry West could spot talent through the window of a moving train. Now, Jerry West was close friends with agent Arn Tellum, and Arn Tellum was representing Kobe at the time and advising him in his deal with Adidas. And Arn Tellum got Kobe the workout with the Lakers, and at the time, Kobe wasn't even considering LA because they had the number 24th pick in the first round. So in the beginning, West gave Kobe the workout as a favor to his friend Arn Tellum. In the workout, Kobe went up against NBA veterans Michael Cooper and Larry Drew, and West said that, quote, Kobe marked over people. Kobe, who signed with Adidas, later returned to LA to shoot an Adidas commercial and his dad informed him that he would be working out for the Lakers again. And that's when Kobe knew that the Lakers were serious about drafting him. It was the first time he had worked out in front of Lakers coach Dale Harris and the workout wasn't even held at the Lakers practice facility. It was a secret workout held at a YMCA in Inglewood. During the workout, the Lakers had Kobe go through shooting drills and play Mississippi State Dante Jones in a game of one-on-one. -on -one. 
Kobe absolutely destroyed him. The Lakers stopped the second workout after just 20 minutes, and Jerry West got up from his seat and rushed to midcourt, where he grabbed Sonny Vaccaro, a man who earned the nickname Soul Man and is known as the godfather of basketball sneaker culture because he was the guy that signed Michael Jordan to his first deal with Nike, and he had helped Kobe sign his deal with Adidas. Well, Jerry West told him, that's it. I'm going to take him. Jerry West then called legendary Lakers play-by-play -play broadcaster Chick Hearn, and Hearn heard West on the other line, and West sounded like he was out of breath, and Hearn asked him, have you been running? And West said, no, I just came back from watching the best 17-year-old player I've ever seen. Now, this was going to be a big summer for the Lakers, who are also trying to make a big splash by luring in the game's top free agent, Shaquille O'Neal. But in order to get Shaq, they had to get out from under Vlade Divac's contract and they tried to trade Divock to the Nets for the number eight pick, but the Nets didn't want to make that deal, and the Nets were seriously considering drafting Kobe Bryant. They had worked him out three times. They were dead set on taking him with the number eight pick, and that's when Nets GM John Nash received a call from Arn Tellum, who was working with Bryant, and Tellum told Nash that it wasn't going to work out and that the Nets shouldn't draft Bryant. Tellum told Nash that Bryant had a falling out with his parents and didn't want to play in New Jersey where he'd be close to home and his parents. And that's when NBA super agent David Falk, best known for representing Michael Jordan, called new Nets head coach John Calipari and convinced him to draft his client Villanova's Kerry Kittles. See, David Falk had heard through NBA agent circles that Kobe was trying to avoid getting drafted by the New Jersey Nets, and he saw this as an opportunity for his client, and he convinced the Nets to select Kittles with the number eight pick. So the Nets decided that if Kittles was available, they'd take him with the number eight pick. And if he had already been selected, they were going to go with Kobe. Well, Kittles was still available. They drafted him with the number eight overall pick. And then Kobe goes to the Hornets with the number 13 pick. And that's when Jerry got Kobe to come out west. The Lakers traded center Vlade Divac for Kobe Bryant and what would go down as one of the most memorable draft day trades in NBA history. And that is how Kobe Kobe Bryant ended up on the Los Angeles Lakers. I used to watch Magic Johnson bring the ball up the court, and I used to envision myself, you know, in the hallways at the house, knocking down lamps and, uh, you know, creating all kinds of chaos in the house and thinking about Magic Johnson. And it's just like a, it's just like a dream come true. Kobe Bryant was one of the most clutch players in NBA history. His 36 game winning shots are first all time. Michael Jordan hit 25 in his career and LeBron James currently has 19. Kobe's eight game winning buzzer beaters are second all time to Jordan's nine with the first one coming against the Hornets in 02 and the last one coming against the Heat in 09. One second, Kobe pump fake, Kobe for the win! Taking a little bit of time, one dribble pull up, for the win, he's got it! And aside from just having that clutch gene, the ability to take and make big shots, he knew how to get to his spots. He was an expert at using his footwork, using that rip through, anything that he could do to keep that defender off balance and get himself some more space to get a shot off. Pump faking, using that first step to get around guys to free up some space. Look, he was absolutely masterful offensively when it came to crunch time, the ability to post up to get shots off. And look, sometimes he wasn't even open and it just went in because he's Kobe Bean Bryant. Just look at the shot he hit against the Portland Trailblazers to win the Pacific Division in 2004. This is one of the most difficult shots you're ever going to see in the history of the NBA. Fully defended, fade away, has a fingertip of space to get that shot off, and he drains it to give the Lakers the win. Look, he didn't have ice in his veins. He had Mamba Venom in his fangs. I mean, just the fact that it would take 15 minutes to watch all of his game winners tells you everything you need to know. Kobe Bryant was the definition of clutch.
but before becoming one of the most clutch players in NBA history, before the game winners and the buzzer beaters, one of Kobe's most defining moments was the air ball party against the Utah Jazz. Kobe shot four air balls in five minutes of the fourth quarter in overtime in game five of the 1997 Western Conference semifinals, and Kobe later said it was the turning point for him and probably the most important game in his career. I didn't have an offseason. I, I went straight to Palisades High um, that night as soon as we landed. I went straight to the gym and went to the janitor. He opened up the gym for me, and I was there until the sun came on. And, was, and I was back there again the next day, and then the next day after that, the next day after that. Why did those air balls happen? Got it. High school, year before, we played 35 games, max, right? Week in between, spaced out plenty of time to rest. In the NBA, it's back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I didn't have the legs. So you look at the shot, every shot was online. Every shot was online, but every shot was short. Right? I gotta get stronger. I gotta train differently. The weight training program that I'm doing, I gotta tailor it for an 82 game season mm. so that when the playoffs come around, my legs are stronger and that ball gets there. So I look at it with rationale. And say, okay, well, the reason why I shot air balls is because my legs aren't there. I got well, next year they'll be there. That was it. Now, when people talk about the best dunkers of all time, you don't really hear Kobe's name brought up. You hear names like Julius Irving, Michael Jordan, Vince Carter, Zach Levine, but Kobe was an underrated dunker and one of the best in-game dunkers the game has ever seen. Kobe was a versatile dunker with insane creativity. He had ridiculous body control. You saw him dunk off one foot, dunk off two feet, get alley-oops, reverse dunks, 360s, windmills, reverse windmills. There was no dunk that Kobe couldn't do on the court. Kobe Bryant was a slam dunk giant. So here's some of the most memorable dunks and posterizations from Kobe's legendary career. Here we got a dribble drive, change of direction by Bryant. Slam dunk by Kobe Bryant. Behind the oh! What did I just see? Buckle up for Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant just sucked the curvity out of the target center. What a play. First, you got to get this in from Kerry Kittles. Just like how Kobe's career as a clutch shooter had its origin story, so did his career as a dunker. And that was in 1997 at the NBA Slam Dunk Contest in Cleveland. Where at 18 years and 169 days old, Kobe Bryant became the youngest NBA Slam Dunk champion in history. Some people feel Kobe Bryant is the favorite. 18 years old, 6'6", six, six, Pennsylvania. Years old, third dunk. Oh, that was big. Jam. But these judges have been fair. Then they'll do it one more time. Oh, oh between the legs. Yes. Kobe Bryant. That is so difficult. Some people can't dribble oh, between their legs. Dunk it between his legs. Let's Look at see it. what the Look judges give him. Yes. Straight to the NBA, to Hollywood, and now to Cleveland. And is the 1997 slam dunk champion. Now, Kobe always liked to put on a show for the fans, but he was extra motivated that night because he had scored 31 points in the rookie game the night before and didn't get MVP, and he said that motivated him even more to win the slam dunk contest. After scoring 31 points but not getting the MVP in the rookie game, did that psych you up even more for this? Sure. sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, you want to you win as much as you can. You know, coming in, you know, in the NBA dunk contest, I was psyched up as it is. So, you know, it just pumped me up a little bit more. 
Thanks for watching part one of The Rise of the Black Mamba, the stories behind Kobe Bryant's defining moments and his quest for basketball immortality. For all the latest Lakers news and rumors and part two, be sure to subscribe to the Lakers 24A YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Lakers content, smash that like button. And let me know down below in the comment section, is Kobe Bryant a top three player of all time, and who would you want to take the last shot? Which you go with Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, or LeBron James? Let me know down below in the comment section. My name is DMAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And until next time, go Lakers. Mamba out.